Pretending that every student has the same needs can go wrong, particularly in maths. This is because each piece of maths you unlock acts as a key for other pieces of maths. So students can learn one piece of maths, then use that to unlock the next one. But if everyone is treated the same, it's pretty easy for you to miss out as a student. If you need a bit more time before moving on or miss some time from school, you can end up with some missing keys. Then when you try and learn something new, it doesn't go well. A piece of maths that makes perfect sense to others might look like complete gibberish to you. And maths doesn't connect in a simple way, it's a complicated web. So gaps can snowball over time. The problem only gets worse. Until most of the maths you're seeing doesn't make any sense to you at all. This can affect any student, no matter how advanced they are. In fact, most students have gaps in some areas, but in other areas things are rock solid and they could progress really quickly, but can be held back by a more one-size-fits-all approach. That's why your school is treating every student as the unique individuals they are, by providing true differentiation, tailoring maths learning to meet their individual needs. Let's look at how your school teaches maths in a way that achieves this. Most of the year is made up of two-week cycles. These contain a mixture of individual and group learning, rich learning, and checking in on progress. Let's look at each piece in turn. First, individual and group learning. Lessons normally open with an energizer. This is a five to 10 minute activity with something for everyone. Some energizers help to build number fluency, some give practice searching for patterns, some even discuss future mathematical careers. There's lots of variety to keep things fresh. After the Energizer, there's usually a teacher-led mini-lesson with a targeted small group of students. This provides explicit teaching to develop a key concept that all these students are ready for together. Often these activities are quite hands-on and involve lots of open discussions. Meanwhile, the other students are working on modules. Different students complete different handwritten work in their exercise book at the same time, with the computer helping to organise and guide. Students develop as independent learners and can choose which module to work on, but it's always something that they're ready to learn. The modules aren't just practice problems. They help to build new mathematical ideas and understanding from the math students already know. Students can get teacher help with modules, of course, particularly after the mini lesson is over, but they have lots of other supports to help too. Every question has fully worked solutions and there are videos to help students who are stuck. You can even see which peers might be able to help or work alongside them if needed. And that's how the individual and group learning works. Now let's look at rich learning. In these lessons, the teacher gives the whole class an interesting situation to explore. And working in small groups, students build real-world STEM skills and general mathematical capabilities like critical thinking and problem solving. These lessons have a low floor and a high ceiling, so they fit students of all levels. What's really great is that students who sometimes struggle with more closed maths exercises often flourish with rich learning, where you get to work in a much more open and creative way. And that's how rich learning works. Now let's look at how checking in on progress works. It starts with the whole class sitting a test. Nothing too stressful, just an opportunity to check on understanding, uncover what students might need to keep working on or what they're ready to learn next, that sort of thing. Each student's test is personalised to them, based on the specific work that they've done recently. Some test questions are online, but others are handwritten, so students can still show working out and explain their thinking. After the test is marked and returned, each student goes through a reflection process where they can analyse and learn from any mistakes they've made, as well as fix up some simple errors. Following the reflection, the teacher sits down one-on-one -on -one with selected students to review their progress and set goals. Every student has these feedback interviews semi-regularly. Overall, checking in on progress is a great way to see how rapidly each student is growing and help everyone stay on track, but it also gives really valuable data that feeds into everything else. For example, if a student is having trouble with a particular piece of maths, the computer will give them more information on where to focus based on that test data. And teachers use the same data to target extra one-on-one -on -one help with specific bits of the curriculum if it's needed. So that's how this two-week cycle is structured. It's supported by some other elements, uh, lessons that develop students' mindsets, diagnostic pre-tests where needed, and some week-long projects. But most of the year is structured into blocks of about two weeks like this, with individual and group learning, rich learning, and checking in on progress all balanced together. 
hundreds of schools use this structure for their maths course. It's called Maths Pathway. Because so many schools share this approach, there are great supports in place, including technology, that make it all practical and easy to do. This is how your school is treating every student as unique. And that's what true differentiation is all about.